time now for our weekly look at the more unusual investments out there. So if you're bored of stocks and bonds, space travel could open up a whole new world of opportunity for your portfolio. Louisa Borson went out to find out. Up until now, the closest you and I have come to going to outer space is by visiting a museum. Well, things could change, and over the next couple of years, seeing the galaxy may become a reality because a new space race is on, and this time it's for tourism. From entrepreneurs to big business, this is a market that's about to take off, and I'm about to meet one of its contenders. Our mission is to, to start taking people to space commercially from the beginning of 2014. We can take people to space in a small rocket ship with one passenger, one pilot. It takes off like a conventional airplane, but it then goes straight up into the air and uh, we'll reach the space within four minutes. So tell us about your spaceship then, the Lynx. It's a spaceship built by a company called XCOR, X -C -O -R. It flies on jet fuel, so we can land, refuel and go again. So we have uh, four flights a day with one spaceship. You have a partnership with KLM. Tell us about that. How does that work? KLM has the same vision as we have. That in 20 to 25 years from now, the next the successor of our spaceship will be able to take you from London to Sydney within two hours. Zero to Infinity's balloon project is also in the business of space tourism. Using a helium balloon and green technologies, the first commercial flight is due in the next couple of years. We go where the sky is black and the earth is blue. There's a pod for four passengers and two pilots and it goes above 99.5% of the mass of air. One space shuttle launch cost around a billion US dollars. For Bloon, the overall investment is a fraction of that. A ballpark number for the, for the required investment uh, getting past break-even is 20 million euro. There was an, a Series A round uh, with three business angels and one VC. We expect another Series B before commercial operations. The sector is aimed at high net worth individuals. Leading the ticket sales is Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic. Next is SXC, while Bloon will be taking deposits in the next few months. And a return on investment, when do you think that that would be feasible? The company, uh, if everything goes according to plan, is profitable uh, this year already. In 100 flights, you can start to get a break even, which is incredibly early for for such a system. Zero to Infinity and SXC see this sector as profitable, but can it be for you? Currently, there are no funds. To gain access, you need to invest in a company. The New Space Global Index is one tool that can shed light on the sector. Another piece of advice, I would look first at management, who's running it. Then the business side of things. I mean, is it capitalized? Who's backed it? It's, it's really pioneering, so there are not that many companies involved uh, yet, but that, that number will grow. Joining us now in the studio is Julian Ranger. He's the CEO of iBundle and DadApp.com. He's also involved in the Google Lunar X Prize Moon Race team. Nice to have you on the set this morning. Thanks for joining us. When it comes to investing, a lot of investors, fund managers, people tell us to look at fundamentals. Excuse the pun, but is this all pie in the sky kind of stuff? No, not at all. There's actually quite a move to space, as you've just seen. We're talking there mainly about low Earth orbit. But the moon is the next place we're going to go, basically for resources and experiments, low gravity experiments. Therefore, you need to actually understand the conditions on the moon, what's there. So we're looking at resources, utilization and experiments. And there's a little bit of entertainment uh, money that we can get as well. Your project, your first mission that you're embarking on, you expect to uh, raise $70 million after an initial $20 million investment. This seems like huge upside. How do you achieve that and where does it come from? Right, what it does is uh, it costs us about just under 100 million, between 70 and 80 million to get to the moon to do the task that we're doing. We have various contracts. So our first contract that we're working on right now is a small one to prove we can take a NASA perspective uh, for water to the moon. They give us a lot of money. We take along extra experiments on our um, launch vehicle and uh, descender. 
and from there plus a few sort of other contracts we get will gross about 170 million on about 100 million total cost making about a 70 million profit looking at the 2013 obama budget um nasa funding flat at best perhaps for the next couple of years i think somewhere in the region of 18 billion dollars is what they would receive uh, in the next year. Does that leave opportunities for more independence to enter this field? The fact that NASA is feeling the same constraints that a lot of uh, government agencies are, i.e. less funding for the official groups, hence it opens up to the private sector. That's exactly what it is. If you go back to the early 2000s, NASA had a plan for eight lunar exploration missions at a billion dollars each. We're doing this for sub 100 million, so we can really dramatically save for them. And then we open up, there's a lot of other commercial entities that want to do low gravity experimental research, other experiments from the moon because of its unique characteristics. So we can meet both sets of requirements very cheaply and then therefore make That's quite it. a lot of Let me profit. turn the same question on its head. How do you compete though with an agency that has such enormous funding, albeit uh, restrained in future years? A $20 million budget compared with an $18 billion budget, it just seems to me that you can't have anywhere near the kind of know-how for that kind of money that the, the official agencies have got. That's absolutely wrong, uh, largely because if you look at the SpaceX, we've booked a Falcon 9 rocket, so we haven't got to develop a rocket. There's already Elon Musk, the billionaire, has done that, with, so we've got that, and we've actually booked that rocket. We're the only people who've booked a, a return to the moon rocket. We've also got the world's best autonomous vehicles, chap Red Whitaker, who's our CEO, so he's won DARPA challenges, he was the first to put robots into Chernobyl things like that so we have got the expertise and you can do this with low cost now with the materials the understanding commercial technologies are working so we have to solve the lunar night problem it gets very cold and then very hot but the battery technology is there so in fact we're doing all of that we're going to take the web the internet to the moon so uh, yeah we can Julia, definitely do that I'm wondering what your own individual balance sheet looks like are you giving some of the profits back if you booked a ticket on uh, the Virgin Galactic flight yes well I'm I'm space all round so I've invested in Astrobotic and uh, I think I'll see a good return on that and yes I've booked my tickets oh, on when Virgin are you Galactic come when are you going into space well they are very good at not telling you so I'm guessing it will be next year 2013 so hopefully 13 will be good for me I hope you get some decent frequent flyer miles with them uh, you probably do, yeah. I don't know what the food's like, though. It's probably got a better, better than some of the uh, low cost airlines I travel. Julian, thank you so much indeed for joining us. It's Absolutely a pleasure. fascinating here. Julian Ranger, CEO of iBundle and DadApp.com. Uh, for more on this out of the world investments and uh, plenty of others, as well as how you can make money from diamonds to horses, visit our website, uh, alternativeinvesting.cnbc.com. Uh, back down to earth with John Moulton after this very short break. He's our guest host, Chairman of Better Capital. <laughs>